and welcome back to more of the letter with me flog now last time when we left off we'd finally reached the mansion we've met some of the characters and uh, we've seen the awesome awesome upgrades that these guys have made to this game and so we're going to continue playing the surrounding area is unusually silent and only the rustling of leaves could be heard as the occasional breeze passes while Ansem Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose, out of fear, perhaps horrified at the thought of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow, it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it had any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place is going to be at night. Are you planning on going inside that place, Missy? The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum and, I re and a return of my nod. Belatedly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I paid, but there's a hesitant expression on his face as if, something is, as if there's something he hasn't said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy. I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about this place. Nobody likes to be nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. But maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after, but what he said left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh and make my approach toward the house. I should have expected this conversation to take that turn, but I'm already here and backing out is completely out of the question now. It isn't like I have any choice in the matter anyway. If I want to get the, that bonus and commission, one way or another, I'm going to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, and my own copy of the keys dangle in my hands now useless. Rose must have left it open when she arrived earlier. That's weird. We might be the only people here this early, but I've never known her to be someone so careless. Entering, she what greets me inside leaves me gaping. I've cleaned every corner they've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antique, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span, all for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to modern day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have listened to what the other people are telling them and leave this place alone. Some things in the world are better left in peace, never to be disturbed again. Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here. Where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll be able to hear me despite the deafening silence. She could be all the way on the other side of the mansion for all I know. I reach for my cell phone and dial her number, but... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. What do you mean has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away, right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably wandered off deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping to connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. But to no avail. Oh boy, I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose, if you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose, this isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing on deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move by the hallway above the grand staircase. Okay. <laughs> what the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. I'm leaving if you don't come out. I'm not co not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Okay, that is a lie. She is my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. Growing desperate, I make another attempt to reach her by phone. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord? Yes, finally, it came through. Hello? Hello, Rose. I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond. There's also heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to settle. I'm at T. 
kick. What? The attic? Why? Crap, I got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. I wonder, no wonder I couldn't contact her. Why is she there? Out of all the places she could be, she had to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this place. Is she going to get back at me for being late? Oh, whatever. I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being in this place. I make my way carefully up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact I chose real estate when I could have picked a career that didn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. It branches out into two major wings of the mansion, the east wing and the west wing. There are two attics here, one on each. But each side has been converted into a storage room of sorts, sorts and somehow I find it least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did go into those stuffy rooms. So I head toward the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens into a small room. Inside is yet another set of stairs leading up to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs in the attic are deep, steep, and were made out of rocks. If I'm not too careful, I could easily... St Why would someone make a staircase out of rocks inside of a... Oh, whatever. Thank God it's still daytime. With how old the place is, there's no light fixtures to illuminate the narrow passage, and I would need a flashlight to make my way up. Why they didn't bother to add one here when they renovated escapes me. She said they won't... Wait, she... They did it with the rest of the house. The small bedroom wel welcomes me upon reaching the top. It looks exactly like it had been since the last time I was here. Full of dust, worn out and faded by time, and creepy moaning noises. Odd, I thought they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Ugh. Cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, it couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of the estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake, and I'm sure she said she was here in the attic. Maybe this is just a prank, or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Ugh, shut up, brain. You're not helping. Don't make this any scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? <coughs> okay, that scared the shit out of me. What the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered... Sp wait. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing the mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time. No, I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who's more fucking realistic than me to tour people around this haunted house. Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room, just to check. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts have caused me to miss when I first entered the room, but there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... a letter? Lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I leaned down and picked it up. Strange, I don't recall seeing this here last time. A few days back, me and my other agents were exploring the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave, but this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have been in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs to and from the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried that it'll fall apart if I so much as touch it. With great care, I open it and what I read shook me to my core. Okay, well that scared the crap out of me. What? what Oh my god. Nothing but the words help me fills the page, all of it seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just keeps going on and on until... Send this to five people. Really? It's a chain letter thing? Send this to five people or else? Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. Uh, no. Oh, please, no. My hands are trembling as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has frozen me on the spot. Well, hello, Freddy Krueger's feet. 
A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. Nerves and veins are exposed in a grotesque display. A foot rests at a painfully odd angle and all the toenails seem to have fallen off, leaving only the decayed remains of an infected nail beds in their wake. Bile rises in my throat at the gory sight. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to make a break for the door, run, scream, throw up, anything. My mind is screaming at me, but my feet won't budge, glued to the floor and completely paralyzed out of terror. I trapped my own, wait, trapped in my own body. The only sign that I'm still alive is the loud beating of my heart as it echoes in my ears and the tremor that continuously runs through my body. I open my mouth to say something, but the words catch in my throat. I want to cry. I don't know what to do. Wait, I don't know what I should do. Lord, please help me. Now, see, I could be brave and look up, which is what I think I did last time. Or I can close my eyes and pray. And you know what? I think last time I got, like, eaten or something. I can't remember. So I'm going to do this first time. Okay, I shut my eyes tight, muttering fervent prayers under my breath. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayers taught to me as a child by my mama and my papa slip out endlessly through my teeth because God... Oh, God, if you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one. And if God doesn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. A cold comfort. I wait. And I wait some more. But when nothing happens, I dare to take a peek, only to find that the ghost, the, the thing, whatever it is, it's gone. Relief washes over me as I shakily get to my feet and back away towards the door. Watching it open, I slip out with a second thought and make a run for it down the stairs and onto the hallway. I take a look back to make sure it isn't behind me. Any other person might have stopped, dismissed it as a trick of light and an overactive imagination, but I'm not taking my chances. I'm also running in place because obviously I'm not moving. I'm not giving that thing another chance to catch me off guard. I don't think I'll ever feel safe until I get out of here. Whatever that is, every warning bells in my mind are telling me that it's going to jump out at any moment and get me while I'm still in this place. I told them, I freaking told them, oh man, oh man, oh man. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and my shoe slips and I find myself falling until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay awake. No, G go away. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. <laughs> to be continued. All right, so that's actually really cool. So thank you for playing the letters beta demo okay so i can actually answer by that token of appreciation will email you all a special wallpaper that's cool anyway thank you guys very much for joining me i am flog and this was the letter now this is the beta i believe that that was the same story actually but it was just way better with the animation and everything so this is more of like an update to the demo that's already out so i am very eager to get to play this game all the way through so thank you guys very much for joining me once again are you gaming well you should be so get out there guys and i'll see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>